Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about one of the important topic in VLSI that is chip design flow. So we can call it as uh, chip design flow as uh, ASIC design flow, RTL to GDS flow. It is one of the important topic in VLSI design. In this particular topic, we will discuss the front end and back end design flows in VLSI. Okay, let's move further. Fine. So it's a brief overview of our topic. So in this topic, we will discuss all these concepts like specifications, design architectures, RTL coding, etc. We will discuss all these topics in a very detailed manner in upcoming slides. Fine. So these are the various stages in front-end design flow and back-end design flow. So see here, here we have front-end design flow and here we have back-end design flow. It is also called physical design flow. So in this particular video, I will concentrate only on front-end design flow. In another video, I will discuss the physical design flow that is back-end design flow. So these are the various stages in front-end design flow. Those are specification, architecture, behavioral model, or tail coding, verification, synthesis, gate level simulation, and EFT insertion. We will discuss all these front-end design flow stages in a very detailed manner. Let's move further. The very first step in front-end design flow, that is specification. So generally, the specification is defined by experienced VLSI engineers or experienced VLSI architects, we can say. The specification is nothing but it is a standard document to understand the functionality of a design. So the specification is to collect the specifications that describe the functionality interface abstractly and overall architecture of the chip to be designed. So it is one of the very first step in uh, front-end design flow. So according to the semiconductor industry requirements, the VLSI experienced VLSI engineers will specify these specifications. Okay, let's discuss the second stage in front-end design flow that is architecture. Okay. Now, the architect, that means VLSI engineer, gives a system level view of how the chip should operate. They will decide what are all the components are required, what clock frequency they should run, and how to target power and performance requirements. So, we can say an architecture is simply a block diagram. So, they also decide, that means uh, they mean here the VLSI engineers. The VLSI engineers also decide on how the data should flow inside the chip. So architecture means after specifying the specifications, we will define the architecture. It's just like a block diagram. Fine. So in the another step or another stage in front-end design flow is behavioral model. Let's discuss what is this behavioral model. So observe this particular slide. Here, behavioral model is also called transaction level model. Here, TLM stands for transaction level model. Transaction level model. So, it acts like a golden reference for DUT. DUT means design under test. So, it will verify the functionality and performance of a defined architecture. So generally, these transaction level model, it's not synthesizable. It's completely different from the RTL. That means the register transfer level. It's completely different from the RTL. Why? Because RTL is synthesizable. This transaction level model is not synthesizable. We will define this transaction level model by using high level languages like system C, C++ and SP means system Verilog, etc. 
here we are feeding this transaction level model and rtl model to the uvm test bench so it is a one form of the uvm test bench we are feeding this behavioral model and rtl model to the scoreboard so here so it is a kind of a uvm test bench so here the scoreboard means it is one of the verification component that contains checkers and verifies the functionality of a design like that so simple guys uh, behavioral model means uh, it's a transaction level model which is not synthesizable we can simply say uh, so see here so we have completed with specification architecture behavioral model and uh, another step is uh, rtl coding let's discuss rtl coding this is usually done by a digital uh, designer and it is similar to a high level computer programmer equipped with digital electronic skills rtl means register transfer logic generally this rtl coding is done by using uh, either verilog or vhdl etc so here i had uh, inserted uh, two sample programs of verilog and vhdl so it's a, a simple verilog program for full adder so how the rtl coding will looks like so it's a verilog program for full adder so and it's a verilog program uh, so sorry it is a vhdl program for half adder so it is a verilog so and uh, it is a vhdl so these are the hardware description languages which describes the hardware behavior of a design okay uh so the next one is verification the next stage in front end design flow that is verification so here uh, we already write the rtl code either in verilog or vhdl it's time to verify the functionality so whether our rtl code is correct or not okay so for that what we know what we do is we have to write a test bench for that RTL coding uh, is different and test bench code is different. In test bench code, what we will do is we will generate the stimulus that means inputs. So and for and we will monitor the outputs. We are giving some inputs, some sample inputs, some random inputs to our data or to our top level design, and we will monitor the outputs. Whether our design or whether our code will meet the specifications or not. In this way, we can now verify our RTL coding. Here, the verification is done at block level, block level, chip level, etc. Okay, sometimes so we will follow the UEM universal verification methodology in order to verify the design in which a scoreboard is one of the a component is one of the verification component that contains checkers and verifies the functionality of the design so in this way the verification will depth uh, so see here if there is any bugs we will found in the verification again we will uh, go to rtl coding and we will do some modifications in rtl coding and so again we will verify okay so it is a kind of an iterative process so if it is rtl code is good we will get to no errors and no bugs then we will proceed with another step called synthesis let's discuss uh, what the synthesis is so synthesis a synthesis is the process of converting rtl code to gate level netlist it's a process of converting rtl code to gate level netlist so it is the RTL code. It's a simple Verilog code for the D flip flop. So conversion of RTL to gate level netlist is nothing but synthesis. Okay, these are the inputs. What are the inputs for the synthesis? Technology library files, RTL files, constraint files, and uh, DFT definition. So are these are the inputs for the synthesis? So what we will get finally the output is gate level netlist. Okay. So the synthesis is also done. So now it's time to discuss about gate level simulation. That means post synthesis checks. That means after writing the code and we will generate the gate level netlist, 
So after generating the gate level netlist, so what we will do means we will do post synthesis checks. The post synthesis checks that means if we want to verify the gate level design, we need to follow two steps. The first one is uh, gate level simulation or formal verification. By using these two methods or either of the methods, we can verify the functionality of a generated gate level netlist. Okay, here we will follow two steps gate level simulation or gate level verification. That means a gate level verification is performed where verification of certain elements is done once again. The difference being this is time is at the gate level and a lower level of abstraction. The simple guys, after generating the gate level at least, we will follow two steps gate level simulation or formal verification. So, so in order to uh, get a very clear understanding of this gate level simulation, what is gate level simulation and what is this uh, formal verification, let's observe this slide very carefully. So here a equivalent checker, it, it, it is also one of the tool we can say. For equivalent checker, we are feeding two inputs. First one is uh, RTL and another one is uh, GLL, that means gate level netlist. We are feeding these two to the uh, tool called equivalent checker. We are feeding the, the, these two and we will compare the Boolean expressions of inputs and outputs. So whether there is any mismatch in RTL and gate level netlist, it will generate debugs. If not means our gate level netlist is verified perfectly. Okay, it will meet our specifications. Okay, it's a one of the process. It's called formal verification. It's a one of the process. The another process of checking gate level netlist is uh, for gate level simulation. That means by just using simulation, we will verify the gate level netlist. In gate level netlist, even flip flops also designed by using gates. Everything will be in the form of gates only. Okay, so the final step in front end design flow is DFT in session. So let's discuss what is the DFT. DFT means design for testability. In DFT, we will replace all the normal flip flops with the scannable flip flops. So see here, it's a scannable flip flop. So that means, um, uh, and additionally, one component is added along with flip flops that is a multiplexer. Here the inputs are D, SI, SC, and clock. Q and outputs are Q and SO. SI means the scan input. SC means scan enable. So SO means scan out. So that means we will replace all the flip flops with scannable flip flops. Then our design will work in two modes that is in either in normal mode or in scan mode. So we will follow various steps in DFT insertion like scan path insertion, memory bish, ATPZ, etc. Scan path insertion, a methodology of linking all register elements into one long shift register. This can help to check small parts of the design instead of whole design. So if you wanted to check the small parts, we will use the scan path in session. So another one is memory bist. Bist means built-in self-test. Memory bist is also one of the device which is used to check ra random access memories. So another one is ATPG, automatic test pattern generation. ATPZ is a one of the method of creating the text to vectors or sequential input patterns to check the design for faults generated within various elements of a circuit. Okay, so we are generally do this DFT in session. So after generating, after uh, generating the gate level netlist, after verifying the gate level netlist, finally we will do DFT in session. So just to know about our design had met our specifications or not. So it's our final step in the front end design flow. After that, we will going to discuss about back end design flow in our next video. Okay guys, thank you.